I'm gonna show you how to use the products analytics report in Google Merchant Center next. Hey, this is John from Stub Group. If you don't know who we are, we are a digital advertising agency and a premier Google partner. We help businesses dominate Google ads and make money online. So Google Merchant Center next, I've been creating a lot of videos about this um, as people try to figure out how to navigate and what to do with the information available. So today I'm doing a deep dive into the section of Google Merchant Center next called products under analytics. Now don't be confused because it's confusing. Uh, Google has a section called products under your business where you can see information about your products. And then they also have a, a section called products under analytics, and that's where you can see other analytical data. So that second one is what I'm going to talk about today. So let's dive in. There are currently five tabs that Google has available, five different kind of reports and options on uh, this uh, section of Google Merchant Center next. So this first section here is about traffic and it's kind of giving you overall information about traffic from paid ads as well as from free listings uh, to your website. You can see how it's changing over time. You can change date, uh, date ranges. You can look at just as traffic, just free listings traffic, um, and you can see popular products and popular brands as well. I'm gonna blur some of the um, actual brands and product names just to protect confidential client information, but you will get the idea. You can also see you know, countries where your clicks are coming from, the top categories that your uh, product's getting traffic from, et cetera. All right, so this one is, is helpful when you're looking at kind of traffic and what's, what's changing in terms of volume, but it's not my most favorite report here. My most favorite report is actually is under pricing, which I'll get to in a minute. But first let's look at competitors. So competitors, this gives you a sense for how you are rating next to competitors, who is showing up. So you can see, okay, you know, we have an 8% uh, overlap with this competitor, 1% with that one. This is a great place to maybe even find out about competitors you didn't know existed, or at least to see, uh, you might think, oh, this is our main competitor, but maybe they're not doing much with Google Shopping and somebody else is actually doing much more in Google Shopping. So you wanna be aware of what's going on. And you can see some reports about how has that changed over time by category of the products that you are selling. Um, you can see of the people that you're advertising against, who has the highest visibility. Often you're gonna see Amazon on there because if you have any overlap with Amazon, they obviously have incredible visibility, et cetera. Then you've got the popular products report. And this is a place where you can see kind of how many popular products you have in total, what categories they're in, um, of what you sell, of the brands that you sell. If you're selling other people's products, if you're not just creating your own products, you can see which of those brands are most popular on Google. Uh, so this can be helpful if you're, let's say you have a bunch of products and you're thinking through, okay, which one should I prioritize advertising? You can look and see which brands are hot right now just across Google Shopping and prioritize your time on advertising those. You can also see just in general, which products seem to be top selling across Google out of your product mix. Some of these uh, reports are not gonna be very useful to you if you are manufacturing your own products and there's not other people selling them and so there aren't benchmarks for Google to compare you against. So some of these are, are more relevant and applicable if you are a, a reseller, let's say for an OEM and uh, there are multiple other people who are selling the same products. Pricing, uh, similar, again, pricing is benchmarks. So this relies on you selling a product that's sold by other people as well. If you have your own unique products, this isn't gonna be a super helpful report most of the time because Google doesn't know how to benchmark your product against other advertisers selling the same product. But this is really, really valuable if you are selling products that are sold by other people because you can see how you compare to them on price. This report right here in particular um, which you can also kind of get to from view cheaper products, view more expensive products, super, super valuable. And I'll show you how you can use it. So let's say we want to go and view uh, products where you are more expensive than competitors. I mean, let's, let's look at this product here. Your price or our client's price in this case is 97% higher than the kind of effective average that Google's seeing other people sell it for. That means it's gonna be really hard to sell that product uh, unless there's you know, something very, very unique about this uh, business's approach and you know, why they can convince people to pay double what they can pay elsewhere. You know, they're at a competitive disadvantage. So I'm probably not gonna put a lot of ad spend behind this product. Also, I'm gonna to talk to the client about this because sometimes you might find out that there's actual pricing problems. The client may look into it and realize, oh, we've got the wrong price. It shouldn't be this. 
Maybe that's why it's not selling. We should change it. Um, or they might say, you know what? We can't be competitive for this particular product. Let's stop selling it because no one's going to buy it. So this is very helpful in identifying problems from an outlier perspective and saying, hey, are these prices correct? If so, you know, why are you charging so much more? And um, what can you do to potentially fix that and get your price down? Conversely, if you view cheaper products, those are areas of opportunity. So this is where your prices are significantly lower than kind of the effective average rate. And so these might be opportunities to say, hey, let's put more ad spend behind it. Now, you know, if you got something that's $1.97, I'm probably not going to put a lot of ad spend behind that unless I know it's a really good loss leader and people are going to purchase other products that increase their AOV. But for, you know, something like this product here, $25.97, that's uh, 50, almost 60% cheaper than the average that Google is seeing. Hey, that's an opportunity. That means if our ads appear for this product with our price, we're probably going to have a really great click through rate and conversion rate compared to competitors because we are so, so competitive on price. And so I might put more ad spend behind these and kind of double down on advertising these cases. Or again, you might see, oh, our price shouldn't be that low. That was a mistake. And so you, this might save you from having problems. So this is my favorite report of these reports here uh, when you're really digging down at a product level and seeing how can you improve performance. This promotions tab, lastly, this is just for situations where you're running promotions on your products, um, when you have things like uh, price drops, low prices, etc. You can see, okay, how are people reacting to those types of things and get data along those lines. So hopefully this is helpful. If you have any questions about Google Merchant Center next or anything else uh, digital advertising related, leave a comment on this video or reach out through stepgroup.com. We'd be happy to answer your questions to the best of our ability. And if you like more free content just like this, tap subscribe on our YouTube channel. Until next time, thanks for watching.